Hi guys and welcome to Sunderland vs Wickham match preview. So Sunderland do welcome Wickham to the stadium light this Saturday at 3pm. So Wickham they're currently second, they're currently unbeaten after a very very strong start to the season. So we'll have a look at their results so far. So of course first game of the season they did beat Accrington Stanley by two goals to one, that was at home. They then went into the first round of the Carabao Cup where they drew 0-0 with Exeter but then they went on to win on penalties before returning to the league. They got a 3-1 win away from home against Cheltenham, which is a brilliant result, before going to Wigan away from home again and drawing one all. They then took on Lincoln and won by a goal to nil. And then in the second round of the Carabao Cup, which of course took place this week, they uh, beat Stevenage on penalties after drawing two all. And now, of course, this weekend, they will be coming up to the stadium of last. So if you look at their results there, they haven't necessarily been blowing sides away. You know, it's one nil, or sorry, one goal differences in in results, and and of course in the Carabao Cup as well. They seem to have well, they have been relying so solely on their penalty shootouts. But in the league, you know, they're just getting these these little wins here and there with one nils and and two ones, which of course you don't really care how many goals you score as long as you get the as long as you get the three points, which of course something. That, that we we that we want to do ourselves, and they're currently second league because they are unbeaten. But that's not to say that you know we can't beat an un, an unbeaten side. We did it, we did it in Wimbledon uh, just last weekend. Uh, but for me, Wickham, they're definitely going to be there or thereabouts uh, this season. They'll definitely be pushing for playoffs or in the top two after coming down last year. One thing I have you know analysed about their side, of course, they're a very energetic and very very dangerous side. But they seem to give up possession uh, quite easily in terms of they will allow the opposition to have. Um, to have position, possession sorry, and play very much a counter-attacking brand of football but that's where their energy and their ruthlessness does come into play because if you look at the stats or the statistics for almost every single game so far this season in the league anyway they've had under 40% possession but they've had over like 14-15 shots and they've pr pretty much doubled the amount of shots that their opposition have had but they've always given up possession for that which of course possession isn't everything um, you need to be able to defend against this side because they do seem to be pretty dangerous going forward because like I say against Lincoln as well where they did get the 1-0 win they, uh, they only had 39% possession but they had 16 shots again in comparison to Lincoln's 9 and that's pretty much been a, a, a running theme there against um, Wigan they had 43% possession but they still had more shots than Wigan 12 shots to to Wigan's eight, so they're getting shots away, they're getting chances, they're creating chances, but they're allowing the opposition to almost dictate the tempo of the play and control the game, which it could suit us, but it would also mean that we have to make chances ourselves, and when we do, because they won't give up too many chances, they might give up possession, but they're not going to give us, they're not going to, you know, gift wrap us chances, you wouldn't think anyway, so when these chances do come, and I do believe in our ability to make chances, we need to take those chances, so we'll head into my preferred 11, not my predicted 11, but the 11 that I would maybe go for for this game against Wickham. So here is my preferred 11. Of course, you can see we have Patterson in goal. He took over Burge midweek against Blackpool. Burge apparently picked up a knock in the warm-up. And Patterson started in his place and he was absolutely fantastic. There's a save that he made against Blackpool midweek. You know, it was uh, Jerry Yates, I believe. He cut him from left to right. He tried to strike it in the far corner, but it took a wicked deflection. Wrong foot in Patterson, and his reflexes and his reaction save to quickly change the opposite direction, flick it around the post, was utterly amazing. It really was, and I really can't give him enough credit for that. But then the back four, I've put Sirkin back, although at times he... He can look a little bit shaky, but I think only with time he's, he's going to get better. I think defensively that's something he, he could work on a little bit. I'm going to say work on because I do think actually in, in the tackle, you know, aerial threats, I, I do think he's generally very, very good in the 50-50 and what have you. I think he is good defensively, but it's when a man is running at him, I feel like he just gives them a little bit too much room, you know, when he's backing off, which you do with a man anyway. If a winger's running at you, you do back off a little bit, but you need to squeeze the space to make it difficult for the winger. But the few times we have seen him, I feel like he gives the winger just a little bit too much space to run at him and it gives the, the winger and the opposition a lot to do. It gives them a lot of options rather than closing the options down for him, if that makes sense. But for now, I am going to go for Sirkin because I really, really don't want Dan Neal at left-back anymore because I'm just going to jump straight to it. Dan Neal, for me at the moment, he is the first name on the team sheet. 
No, no shadow of a doubt. I just think he is that good, and he is so unbelievably wasted at left back. And I get sometimes, you know, he's doing brilliant. He's done a brilliant job every time he's played left back. Daniel has been great, but in the middle, he runs the show. He's tenacious. He gets back. He's tricky. He can get forward. His eye for a pass is absolutely excellent for his age, and he dominates. He really, really does dominate. And a game where you want, or you might predicts that you're going to get a decent amount of possession is someone you want on the pitch as well. And he's got legs in him. He really does have legs in him. But we'll go back to defence. We have Doyle and Flanagan there. Of course, we had Alves who made his debut um, against Blackpool. We had Wright who got some minutes in as well. But from, And Doyle, to be fair, he did give away um, possession which led to Blackpool's uh, second equaliser which made it 2 all. But, you know, he's only like 17. He's going to make mistakes. It was in the court. What, you know, whatever. But it, generally, he's been absolutely excellent this season and I'm not going to dig him out just because he made one error. You know, many of these players have made several errors already this season um, in little bits and pieces. And that's the only one I've really seen from Doyle. So I'm going to keep him in. He's been excellent. Alongside Flanagan, again, he definitely doesn't deserve to be dropped whatsoever. Now, this was a hard one for me because Huggins could easily go right back. But I feel like he's only had that little bit of time, that little chance in the cup. I feel like against a team like Wickham, I don't think it would be fair to chuck him straight back in. Winchester, for me, I think in the long run, I would love to see Dan Neal and Winchester being a partnership there in the middle because I think that would be an absolutely cracking pair. And they were in the cup against Blackpool. Um... But just for now, I want to put him back in right back because I want us to be really solid at the back against this Wickham side. And, and Winchester has been excellent at right back. Um, I could be wrong and Huggins could end up playing there. And, and I wouldn't be completely against it. But for me, I just don't think it is worth worth the risk right now. So in the middle, as you can see, I have put Dan Neal and Luke O'Neill. But in the pre-match uh, press conference for this game, it has been said by, uh, by LJ that there's a chance that Luke O'Neill might not make it, maybe, you know, because obviously I think he popped his shoulder, didn't he, against uh, Wimbledon. Um, so there's a chance he might not make it. He, he might get warned off by the doctors not to use him. But he said he looks okay and he's, he's looked decent on the pitch. But for me, I think Luke O'Neill, Dan Neal, as I say, we want those legs against this really, really energetic Wickham side. There's a chance uh, that Corey Evans might be able to come back in. But again, Lee Johnson said that it would just be a bit of a risk. It'd be chucking him in at the deep end. Um, and if it was a cup final, he might use him. But for me, I think Corey Evans, someone who, if you really want to steady the ship, is an experienced head, that's fine, that's great. And I think against most teams in this league, we will dominate possession-wise, and we might as well do it against Wickham. But he just doesn't have those legs for me that I think you're going to need, and I mean desperately need, against this Wickham side that are so full of energy and full of beans going forward on the counter-attack. So I think 09 and Dan Neal will be ideal for that, um, for that coverage. Now, heading forward, we have Embleton just behind, Ross Stewart, Aidan O'Brien and Lyndon Gooch. Now, of course, you might look at that and think, Joel, what are you doing putting Ross Stewart out on the left-hand side? Now, for me, left-hand side, you know, well, firstly, I think I had to accommodate O'Brien. O'Brien, he scored a hat-trick and I've always said, and I'll never, you know, go away against it, regardless of it being in the cup or not, if you score a hat-trick, you should start the next game. That's just something that, that's just a rule I go by. You should start the next game. You 100% deserve it. You know, it's a hard thing. It's a hard thing enough to get a hat-trick. But against championship opposition, uh, and in the manner in which he did it, granted, you know, one of them, his first goal, the keeper probably should have done a bit better, but it was an excellent one off the ball. Second one, um, it was it took a wicked deflection. Um, I bought the, you know, the, the third. Again, this is the thing I've said so many times about Aidan O'Brien. Yeah, he's not, I'm not his biggest fan in the world. But I said countless times last season that, OK, with Charlie White's goals, yeah, a lot of people credited Aidan McGeady for putting the balls, you know, point blank range for him, banging his head, point blank, you know, easy enough. But none of that would have happened if it weren't for Aidan O'Brien because he's such a nuisance when you put him up top. The runs he makes are very, very intelligent. If you keep an eye on him, some of the runs he makes are really, really good. They're absolutely excellent. But my issue has been his end product, where people find him after making those intelligent runs. You know, he'd either fall over the ball, or his shot would be poor, or his decision making would be poor as well. But he's an absolute nuisance. And so for me, I would put him up top. Stuart can play on the left hand side. He's quick, Stuart. I don't think people give him enough credit for his pace and his dribbling ability. If you look at our third goal against Blackpool, there's a, there's a screenshot image of Stewart and he's surrounded by six Blackpool players and there's no Sunderland players at all. But his dribbling ability, his holding up ability to bring Sunderland players back into play and it eventually leads to the third goal. It shows what he is capable of with his feet. He's not like frigging Charlie White who just can't control a ball. You've got Ross Stewart there who can and he's played a lot of his career, particularly last, uh, not last season, sorry, for his former club. It, he was playing left wing half the time anyway, so he can do it. I'm bothering I here. But you've got Stewart who I would easily and happily play on the left hand side in, in you know, to replace 
McGeady, who hasn't had a great start to the season, and uh, Gooch on the right hand side as well. Um, now, and of course, on the bench, you've got many players. McGeady can come in, obviously, um, to provide a moment of magic. You've got uh, Broadhead, who looked very lively against Blackpool. You've got uh, Pritchard as well, who for me, I think he. When he came on a couple of weeks ago, he, he looked brilliant and he's been given a couple of starts and he hasn't looked you know, quite as good as I would have liked. But he's there and I think at the minute Embleton just shades it in that sort of attacking midfield slash creative role behind the strikers. But for me, that's my explanation. I've gone on way too long here. <laughs> but that is the preferred lineup. I would probably just about go with. And remember to show me or let me know your um preferred team in the comments down below. Now, in terms of my prediction for this game... Now, I've pretty much predicted a Sunderland win for every single game so far this season, or for any of the other predictions I've done. But for this one, I am going to go for a draw, and I don't think it would be a bad point either, but I am going to go for a one all draw. I think we will concede first, and then we will equalise again. And I'll go for it, I'm going to say Ross Stewart is going to get back amongst the goals and get an equaliser for us, and we'll take a pretty decent point, I would say, against a team you know who will be there, thereabouts, and I probably would take a point. I mean, with us being at home... I would like us to get three points every time. I think we're good enough. And there is something in the air for us this season, you know. For me, I don't know what it is. For me, at the minute, I'm so, so confident. I know I've just said we're going to draw one all, but I am so, so confident against any side. I really, really am. There's something about this side this season. There's an air of confidence. And, of course, we've got this youth and energy on our side now. They're not the most experienced in the world, but they all want to play football for Sunderland. And it's just something we haven't seen in a very, very long time. And it's very, very exciting times. We've got this cup run going on at the minute, which seems... Really, really exciting. We've, of course, just been drawn against Wigan of all teams. It was absolutely written in the stars. And I will, will that, well, I will 1,000% be going to that game 100%. Uh, <laughs> the amount of texts and messages I got the second we uh, were drawn against Wigan last night, it was uh, it was absolutely hilarious. Um, but, yeah, so I, I would love to go to see that game. Uh, and, of course, uh, just quickly, briefly mentioned, which I did allude to earlier, the, the, the win in the Cup against um, against Blackpool. I, I was absolutely gutted I couldn't make it, given it was on. I was at a meal literally round the corner from the ground. It was horrible, <laughs> but I had to attend this meal anyway. I had to attend it, so unfortunately, I didn't get to see it, um, it live anyway. But yeah, so I'm going to go with a one-all draw, but um, I, I do have the confidence. I don't think we're going to lose. I, I can't see us losing this game, but I will take a one-all draw. I'll be respectable, but I think Wickham, on their counter-attack and their energy, they will cause us problems, 100%. There are only a handful of teams that I, I would give them that in this league against us at the minute. I, am, I do back us that much. But yeah, so I'll go for a one-all draw. Let me know in the comments down below what you think the result will be. But if you have enjoyed this video, please hit the like button for me. It'd be massively, massively appreciated. And subscribe to the channel if you're not already to become a fully-fledged member of the Sony Army. But for now, you take care and stay jumped.